So I just went through my entire collection and I picked out 10 fantastic, unbelievable fragrances that I truly think are 10 out of 10, amazing, perfect in every way. Now, I have a lot more than these and there are a lot more that I also would say that are perfect as well. How long can this video get? I wanted to keep with 10 here because it's still quite a bit to unpack, but trust me, there's more. These aren't all of them, but these came to my mind first when putting this video together, so maybe that means something. And that's really all there is to explain, you know? I think these are masterpieces. They're incredible, and if you haven't tried any and all of these, you're missing out. I'm not saying you have to go blind buy full bottles of each and every one of these. That might not be the best idea, but please do yourself a favor and try them at some point in time. Some of them, like Guerlain, Lome, Ideal, Platine, Privé, won't be around forever, okay? They themselves have made it very explicitly known that this is a limited edition. So at some point, it's gonna go away. That's common practice for these because these fresh, you know, Lome, Ideal, Flankers never last. Cologne, Cool, even Sport, which Sport wasn't all that good. That one somehow still stuck around longer than Cool and Cologne, which are both beautiful. They never hang out for a long time, okay? So that's gonna be the case here as well. Now, this one's got, of course, Almond, which is carrying the line. That's what makes this line so unique is their use of Almond. But you're also getting um, a bit of a, kind of a bergamot freshness and a bit of grapefruit as well. So they're just taking that sweet, kind of dusty, powdery Almond DNA and they're just making it a bit more fresh, kind of making this a summer edition, a summer version, and it is fantastic. And again, they did that two times before with Cologne and Cool, and the Cool version, which had a slight green tint, had a bit of a minty undertone. It was impeccable, but those are gone. So as of right now, this is kind of what you get when you want that fresh take of this DNA that you can wear in spring and summertime where it's, it's gonna be a little bit more fresh. You know, now is not the time where I would be reaching for the Eau de Parfum and the Extreme. I love those, and I think those are amazing as well. But man, this one here, it's, it's so good. It's a little bit more innocent, you know, it's just a little bit more playful, but not a ton. It still is down to business and mature and classy. It's just a little bit easier to pull off and therefore a little bit more versatile. But what a beauty of a scent. Try this one or get this one while you can. Now this next one here is you know, it's readily available. I don't think this is gonna be going anywhere anytime soon, and prices have worked its way down to a pretty reasonable spot on discounters. I've seen this as low as 40 bucks for 100 ml unboxed. Typically, maybe you're paying a little bit more, usually, but not a ton. I mean, this is very reasonable stuff. It is the first within the line. It's Brioni Eau de Parfum. So, it's got violet, ozonic notes, apple, and musk. Smells great. It's cooling refreshing. The violet in here, it gives it kind of a watery, blue, purpley type of smell and feeling and texture. It smells great. Violet is underutilized in my opinion. It's nowhere near as common or as popular as basically list off any other popular designer or niche fragrance note. It's just not used all that much in comparison. And that's a shame because I think it is something that will immediately elevate a scent and make it stand out among a lot of others that just aren't using that note. There is something different about it that it just gives it a different feeling, a different personality, a different texture. And that's what you're getting here because it's kind of used at the forefront. And I love it. I think it's a great scent, you know, especially at the price you can get this one at. There's nothing bad I can say about it. Obviously, it's an eau de parfum concentration. That's an added bonus. It might not be completely beast mode. It doesn't have to be. We're not really, you know, that's, that's an added nice touch. But really, when I'm talking about just beautiful, perfect, amazing scents, the scent itself comes first and foremost. Anything after that's a bonus. But man, just the scent, just the smell of this is incredible. And it's really good for this time of year too. It, it has a little bit more of a woody undertone than maybe some other summer scents out there, but it still could work if you wanted it to. Next up, let's go with a Parfums de Marly. This one is popular by association, but it's not, you know, the most hyped up one for sure, but I really like it a lot. It's Leighton Exclusif. So what I believe to be like the first flanker within the Parfums de Marly line. You know, this was, 
not too long after the big, big hype wave of Leighton. Obviously, they saw what was happening there and were smart enough to go ahead and put out something that's a little bit more niche because that's one of the main criticisms of Leighton is it, it's niche price from a niche brand, but it doesn't smell like a niche fragrance. This one does. And I mean, you know, for some people, it might be too niche. Who knows, right? It's got vanilla, patchouli, guyac wood, and a whole bunch of other notes, a ton. But that's kind of what I get the most of. There's coffee and amber in here as well, but kind of what I said there essentially is what I'm picking up on. It's just a little bit more of an earthy, woody, smoky version of Leighton. So it still maintains that DNA, that nice, sexy, sweet Leighton smell, but it is a little bit more heavy duty. You know, It truly is more of a niche version of that, which I think is great. And this is also coming from someone who loves the original Leighton. You know, I'm not gonna hate on that one because it's not niche enough. I love it, and there are so many clones of it out there now that are so much more affordable, and that kind of tells you that maybe other people like it a lot too. It really is something that people just want to get their hands on and wear because it works well. But Leighton Exclusive is something that I would reach for if I do want something a little bit more unique, a little bit more challenging perhaps, although I wouldn't necessarily consider this too much of a challenging scent to wear. It's not too hard to pull off, but you get what I'm saying. As far as just scent composition and smell and uniqueness, I mean, this is up there. It really is a great, great find. And at this point, you can get it in 125 ml. Back when I bought this, this is the only size that was available. So, you know, if this bothers you, you know, and you like everything to be the same bottle size, because that's kind of how I am, then you can do that now. I just didn't have that option then. And also, you know, it's very strong. A little goes a long way. This might be all you would really ever need. Something to think about. Speaking of expensive and really strong and a little going a long way, this next one checks off all those boxes as well. And it's also super popular. And it's also a flanker, okay? This is Dior Own Parfum. You know, every time I get to mention this one, I like to try to work it in because at this point, something happened and it's, it's kind of stabilized to the point where it's in stock all the time. Doesn't mean it's cheap, doesn't mean it's affordable or whatever, but it's pretty much to the point where if you want it, you can buy it now. There was a point where sold out everywhere, discounters and everything, it's always super hard to get. That hasn't been the case for several months now. You, know, you have to pay up for it. Typical going rate is 170-ish dollars, okay? It's expensive. Every now and then it's popped up for 125, but when that happens and I send out an email about it because I find it first, it usually sells out pretty quickly, but 125 is an absolute no-brainer steal of a buy because that's pretty close, maybe $15 more than what Diorome Intense goes for, right? So, I mean, that is just, you can't pass that deal up. But again, that's fewer and far between. This one has iris, of course, leather, oud, rose. Smells beautiful. Rich, syrupy, creamy, heavy and dark, intense. I mean, it, it truly is one of a kind. There's there's just nothing else out there like this besides now there's a couple clones of it, but aside from that, you know, this is something something else. And it is quite a bit different than Diorome Intense as well. So if you think that, oh, I like Diorome Intense, I'm guaranteed to like this, that's not really necessarily the case. So I caution you with this one. It's a lot of money. It is challenging. This could get you into some trouble. You might not like it, but if you know what you like and, you know, you just kind of know what you're getting yourself into, this is just... Uh, a beauty of a scent. I mean, I think this will go down as being one of the best designer fragrances ever formulated. It's just incredible. And this, I've said it before, this could easily pass as a niche product if it was bottled and priced as such, which it kind of is almost priced as such. Next up, we have Jean Paul Gaultier uh, Le Mans Elixir. So, really good release here. Uh, I've always been a fan of Ultramail, I've always been a fan of Le Mans Le Parfum. But this one, they really stepped their game up. And I just think it gets away from that youthfulness a little bit more than Le Mans Le Parfum and especially Ultra Male, which is just nothing but sweet and very divisive. That one ruffled some feathers for sure. But I mean, they did a good job here. You know, they're adding in a little bit of honey and tobacco into this smell, which is kind of pre-existing. They've worked the Le Mans scent into this one still, so it's common. Like it, it ties back to the, some of the others, of course, but the honey tobacco combination, which is a fantastic note package. It comes through really well here and it does give it a bit more of a premium, expensive and classy smell. 
but it still maintains that it's a Lamal scent. So it still does have that mass appeal and just that, that usability and it appeals to a broad spectrum of people. So I think this is something that's obviously a great complement polar. It's coming in at a parfum concentration, so it's a really good performer. I think it's amazing. I think they knocked it out of the park with this one. What a great release. Next up, Armani Code Parfum. I mean, you really can't go wrong with this one, but also you really don't have too many options anymore. You know, there's a point where you could get Code Absolute, Code Profumo. Great sense. Amazing. I don't know what they were thinking when they took those away, but they truly messed up. So really, you're left with the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, and the Parfum as far as what's in production that you can get easily without paying a ton of money over what you should be. And of those three, I think the Parfum is the best. And even compared to just other scents out there, I still think this is a really, really good release. And even, you know, if Code Absolute, Code Profumo were still around, I would still feel the same way about this one. I still really like it a lot. They're using that existing code DNA, but they're adding some iris. They're adding a bit more of a modern twist. It gives it a little bit more of a unique kind of uh, depth to it that these days is kind of lacking in the Eau de Toilette and even the Eau de Parfum. It's just a flanker that makes a lot of sense. It also just has a ton of usability as well. It's not too sweet, but it's not too fresh. It's not too powdery. It's not too, you know, uh, aromatic or anything like that. It's just not too much of anything. It just, it does a lot of things really well and I like it for that reason. It's a good performer too, coming in at a parfum concentration. This stuff is great for the cooler times of the year. You can use it for about anything. Next up we have Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum. So kind of random timing because the Eau de Parfum, you know, just Tom Ford Noir Extreme, I mean, it's been out forever at this point, a really long time, and it's been pretty popular for a really long time, but just within the past couple of years, you know, this Parfum came out, which I'm not complaining about. I'm happy that we have it. It's in the video, so that's a good sign. It's just something I wasn't really expecting, but they've kind of been working their way back through and putting out some flankers of some old stuff. So I'm glad that we got this one, and I think it's an improvement. There's nothing wrong with the original, but this one to me is better. They are adding in some leather, which makes a big difference. It actually makes the scent a little bit more masculine, you know, a little bit more of a true cologne style, whereas the original was just very sweet and very gourmand and not necessarily that everybody's going to like this either, of course, but I do think it, it gives it a little bit more of a fighting chance just having that leather addition in here. To me, it kind of makes the scent more complete. It just brings everything together a little bit more. It makes the scent itself a little bit more spicy and rich and textured. It makes it stronger. We're getting a parfum concentration. I just think this one is incredible. It smells amazing. But you still get that kind of gourmand, sweet, edible smell too. So a lot to love about Noir Extreme Parfum. I also am a huge fan of Prada Lome Intense. You know, there was a really sad point where it was impossible to get, but it's back and everything's cool now. So it has the iris, the existing kind of fresh protolome DNA, but then you're getting some leather in here. So again, that note kind of coming back, being brought into some flankers, you know, leather and a bit of a kind of a sweet tonka bean too, to sweeten it up, no surprise, and the leather, give it a bit more of a masculine smell, a little bit more of a textured earthy smell. It's still maintaining somewhat of a fresh DNA or like uh, structure but nowhere near as fresh as the original. Uh, it's not as soapy or anything like that. This is something that I reach for way more than the original Prada Lome. You know, to me, it's to the point where if it's a bit cooler outside, I want to wear Prada Lome Intense. When it's warmer outside, typically I'm not reaching for the original Prada Lome. To me, there just isn't enough to that one to excite me and pull me in anymore. I, I, I would just rather wear something else, you know, but this is one where when it is cold outside, I think about it. You know, I want to pull this one off. And I think that's saying something considering there's a lot of other things I could choose from as well. So really, really good release. We're going to go with a classic up next. Keeping it simple. This is not a flanker. It's the start of a, a line that runs in tandem with another line, but it's kind of the first within this line. It goes all the way back to 2009. It's been super hyped up. But also, even now in 2024, it still is 
just one of the most unique designer releases out there. It's still one of my all time favorites and I still wear this one as much as I can, especially in the evenings, like after a shower, just hanging out at home. I love to wear this one. You know what it is. It's Lana Weed Alone. Why do I have such a small bottle? Well, this is just one of many, right? But I got this one hoping that it would be a vintage bottle because the picture was as such, but of course it's not, but that's okay. I'm, I'll take more. This is, what is this? I mean, 40 ml, 1.3 ounce. Don't buy this bottle size, guys. The price per milliliter is horrendous. I did it to try to get something that didn't work out, but get a 100 mil, you know, that makes more sense price-wise. But yeah, this is just a beautiful cardamom scent. That's really what it is. You get some lavender, you get some cedar wood too, but it's, it's cardamom. Rich, spicy, sexy, mysterious, nighttime, alluring, I mean, what a beauty, what a work of art. Absolutely could not be happier with this smell. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You have to experience this at least once. And at this point, most of you probably have, so it's beating a dead horse, but to me, it's still a 10 out of 10 beauty masterpiece. And at this point, there are many flankers and there are many YSL loams, which are also great, but I still always find myself going back to the original Lanoui de Lome. I just think it's incredible. Last up for this video, we have Le Beau Paradise Garden. It's new, I understand, but I still think it is a knockout release. I think they did a fantastic job here. And yes, there's two, I mean, this is Le Beau and we had Limol earlier. They're separate lines and they are very different, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, they're popular for a reason. It's not just because they're just okay, but they get really popular. Like a lot of these are just really, really, really good. And also they can never keep in stock either, which kind of tells you something too. It's got coconut, fig, mint, green notes, watery notes. It's a fresher version of the original and Le Parfum, you know, because even the original Le Beau isn't fresh. It's pretty sweet. This isn't straight up all fresh either, but it's fresher than the others. And it, it does have more of a minty, green, watery smell to it. No surprise. I just think it's, it's really good. Great for summertime, a little bit of a gourmand sweetness, but not a ton and no, nowhere near as much as the others. What a good release. I mean, definitely get your hands on this one. If you have the opportunity, you know, discounters right now, it's, it's a mess. It just, it sells out quick. They don't really get them in. I notify every time it comes in stock, but they go quick. But at some point this one will stabilize a little bit and it'll be easier to get hopefully by like still summertime, maybe in a couple months it will, but whatever, check this one out. Alrighty guys, that's gonna do it for me. Some fantastic 10 out of 10 perfect fragrances that I just think are unbelievable. I'll link all these down below. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.